determinism permeates just about everything uh, when you stop and think about it. The implications of determinism, and I think that determinism is sort of meant to be taken that way. Um, is there any intervention or is there not? And even if there is intervention, even if there is initiative or agency or free will or anything like that, does it really make any difference? Um, I'm not really sure that that binary view of things, i.e. it's either deterministic or free will, is a logical way to phrase anything um, because it ignores uh, any other number of possibilities, uh, pure randomness versus a holistic view, um, i.e. one that uh, says that both and neither are um, are right. Uh, and it, it does actually permeate everything. One of uh, I'm a history uh, dilettante. This uh, ring that I wear says history on it for whatever that's worth. And one of the big his his questions in history, uh, there, there's several, but uh, the big one is why did the Roman Empire fall? Huh. Try and figure that one out. And the second one is why did the First World War take place? We know why the Second World War take place, or at least we've decided why it took place. But people just can't seem to ever agree on why the First World War took place. People say it was because the Archduke uh, Franz Ferdinand was shot in Sarajevo, but that was because of um, Serbian irredentism, Serbian nationalism that wanted to prize off Bosnia uh, and be become part of the new Serbian kingdom. Or no, it was German reunification, the defeat of France the dis in 1870, the disruption of the balance of power. No, it was the German and British naval arms race, um, all this sort of thing. It's just nobody can ever seem to agree on why the First World War took place. And it, it has actual real-world implications, or it did up until a few years back, because the, the 1914, the, the clash of arms that began then, triggered a series of events that were with us at least until 1991, when uh, the Cold War ended. Um, one could say that it's with us to this day with uh, the supposed clash of civilizations. Well, A.J.P. Taylor is one of the big shots of uh, mid-20th century historiography, or maybe late 20th century, mid to late. Um, and to study the First World War, and particularly to study the origins of the First World War, you, it's hard to ignore this fellow, because he's, uh, he's a, a British historian, here he was, and he, he was one of the people who really carefully studied why the uh, First World War took place, this cataclysmic war that um, completely altered the flow of history. And he, uh, one of the best paragraphs I've ever written, uh, ever written by him, in my opinion, is the following. It is the fashion nowadays to seek profound causes for great events, but perhaps the war which broke out in 1914 had no profound causes. For 30 years past, international diplomacy, the balance of power, the alliances, and the accumulation of armed might produced peace. Suddenly, the situation was turned around, and the very forces which had produced a long peace now produced a great war. <laughs> In much the same way, a motorist who for 30 years has been doing the right thing to avoid accidents makes a mistake one day and has a crash. In July 1914, things went wrong. The only safe explanation in history is that things happen because they happen. Now, <laughs> what's that? It sounds like one of the big shots of historiography is throwing his arms up and saying that history is rubbish. We can't, we can't uh, figure anything out. We can't learn from it. We can't ask ourselves why. We can chronicle a few events, but that's about it. Um, and so determinism. I don't really think determinism can be established as a fact, and I don't think it can be debunked. Um, I think that it's fascinating. I think it's a possible... Um, means of making sense of the universe, but is it irrefutable, or can it become irrefutable? I don't think so. What I do think is that it does have a certain appeal, and it, where it appeals to me is in the uh, search for certainty. Um, certainty is a wonderful thing, and the lack of certainty can leave people extremely disoriented, and I suppose even terrified. So... <laughs> Asking why, i.e. the question that determinism attempts to answer, may in itself be asking too much. Maybe things simply happen. Maybe it's neither determined, 
nor non-determined. <laughs> it's um, it may simply be that we've we framed a question incorrectly, or we've asked an unanswerable question, or we've simply looked at the problem that we're trying to address uh, in in a way that we ourselves are having trouble comprehending. It's an interesting subject, um, and I don't think we're ever going to solve it. I think we're going to keep talking about it, but um, to me that's kind of the fun of it. Thank you.